Good morning, teacher. Very good morning. Teacher, I would like to know how food we take in is converted into energy. The food we take in is converted into energy by a process called respiration. First, food is digested by a process called digestion and from the digested food, energy is produced. But teacher, all the food we eat is not digested. What happens to the undigested food? The undigested food will be excreted by a process called excretion. So many processes occur in our body. How are they coordinated? What are these processes called as? Many such processes occur in our body. These are the metabolic activities which are called as life processes. They help in survival and perpetuation of phrase. For these processes to be coordinated, we need energy and to derive this energy, we need to eat food. Teacher, I have another doubt. Why is it that only animals eat plants and plant products and also other animals as food? But I have not seen any plants eating food. A very good observation. Plants do not have to eat food because they trap the light energy and synthesize food. Whereas animals cannot trap this energy nor can they prepare their own food. Why can't we? Even we can trap light energy through devices like solar lamps and solar cookers and heaters. With science, we human beings can trap solar energy into light or heat energy. But no animal can fix this light energy and synthesize food and convert light energy into chemical energy. Only plants can do that. Why is it that only plants can synthesize food? That is because plants are green in color and they have got chloroplasts in their cells. Hence, synthesize food. So, these are called as autotrophs. You must know what are autotrophs. Autotrophs are those organisms which synthesize their own food and only plants can do that. What is this process called as by which plants are able to synthesize food? This process is called as photosynthesis and in this process plants convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose in the presence of chlorophyll and sunlight. In this process, the plants evolve oxygen which is given into the atmosphere. It balances the atmospheric carbon dioxide and oxygen and adds oxygen to atmosphere. Thus, makes living possible. So helpful the plants are to us and nature. Teacher, we would like to know in detail the process and mechanism of photosynthesis. That's a good idea. Sit down. I shall explain the whole process of photosynthesis for you. We have already discussed that plants synthesize food from carbon dioxide and water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. This process of photosynthesis requires energy. When carbon dioxide reacts with water, then Chemical bonds are formed between atoms of carbon dioxide and water and a complex molecule of glucose is formed. For the formation of these bonds, energy is required. This energy is derived from sunlight. As this process derives energy from sunlight, it is said to be as a photochemical reaction. The energy of this sunlight splits the water molecule and hence is called as photolysis of water and then carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrate. 6 CO2 that is the carbon dioxide reacts with 12 H2O water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll and this results in the formation of C6H12O6 the glucose plus 6O2 oxygen and 6 H2O that is the water. We say that during photosynthesis oxygen is evolved. Now let us perform a small experiment which shows or proves the evolution of oxygen during photosynthesis. 
take a beaker and add water up to three fourth of the beaker and keep a wide mouth funnel. We have to keep the water plants hydrilla inside the broad end of the funnel. Take a test tube filled with water and keep it inverted over the narrow end of the funnel. We have to keep the entire setup in sunlight for few hours. After some time, we observe that small bubbles of gas are coming out of the hydrilla twigs and are collected in the test tube by downward displacement of water. When sufficient gas is collected, slowly close the mouth of the test tube and is lifted out and the gas is tested by introducing a burning splinter. The splinter glows brightly indicating the presence of oxygen and this oxygen has been released by the hydrilla twigs because of photosynthesis which occurred. Thus we can say or prove that oxygen is evolved during photosynthesis. We also say that carbohydrates are formed during photosynthesis. How would you show that carbohydrates are the end products of photosynthesis. The formation of carbohydrates can be tested by using iodine reagent. When iodine solution is added to starch, it turns blue in color. This property of iodine solution can be used to test the presence of starch. When the leaf is treated with iodine reagent, blue color is formed then this indicates that starch is present and photosynthesis has taken place. If we look 